the middle of the night and I'm on a non-stop flight from Chicago to the Middle East. I'm heading toward a multinational summit gathering in Amman, Jordan, one of the few summit locations in the Middle East we can even talk about. For nearly two decades in my role as president of the Willow Creek Association, the Global Leadership Summit has been held in some of the places around the world that are most antagonistic to Christianity. In the post-Christian West, years behind a wall of cold regimes have led to the wholesale rejection of God in our modern world. Leaders here are working to bring life to a church that is dead and dying. They need encouragement as they combat apathy on a daily basis. We've also heard from those who are leading in the midst of poverty, among the everyday hopelessness of slums, toiling in desperate situations to bring the hope of Christ where hope is in short supply. These days, the WCA is increasingly connecting with a third group, persecuted and oppressed leaders. The Kingdom of Jordan is one of the most politically stable countries in the Middle East. Yet while Christianity is not forbidden, it is an extreme minority. And there is widespread support for the death penalty for anyone converting from Islam. In a back room between sessions at the GLS, I was introduced to a courageous pastor named Khalil, whose ministry is thriving despite opposition. What about persecution? Growing this fast, okay. that's noticeable. You know, God give me verse. First Corinthians 16, 9. Mm. I open a door before you. This door, great and effective. Mm. The same time there's opposition, there's persecution. God said, don't look at the opposition, it's my job. Mm. Look at the opportunities. If you look at the Middle East, you see blood everywhere. You see fighting everywhere. We are like shy to share the word of God. I said, what, what's going on? We need pastors over here. Start to think outside of their churches who need or family. We think about city or country or the whole Middle East. You know, I've been to so many global summits in different settings, different contexts, different cultures, countries. And it just hit me that this guy cares about what God wants to do in Jordan at a much higher level than only his church or his ministry. In over 90 countries around the world, the Willow Creek Association is supporting leaders from every sector of society, and the GLS is a critical part of that. Whether it's in North America or an unnamed country in the Middle East, the local church is the hope of the world, but only when it's working right. That night, after the first day of the GLS was over, Pastor Khalil hosted a multinational gathering of pastors in his home. Ordinarily, these leaders are unable to even be seen in the same room together because of political circumstances. To be in this atmosphere together, it is something. If Lebanon, Jordan, Egypt, Syria, Emirates, we are together and we catch the vision, and we catch the fire, I believe the whole Middle East immediately because one church, one single church, cannot change the world. But the body of Christ together, we can make big difference. Every leader wants to be better. I want to be better. And it's give us also the encouragement and that, yeah, we are not alone. Some people face the same issues before and they can teach us, they can support us, they can understand us. Many of us, we feel that we are alone. So when we see the testimonies we hear today, it's encouraging us. The Lord was speaking to my heart. I couldn't help my tears. We need it. We want to learn it. We need it. For there to be a community of 170,000 leaders who are learning about leadership in Christ, in the context of God's purposes in this world, is a really cool thing. But I do see the day when 170,000 leaders felt like just the beginning because there are so many other leaders and there's so many other pockets around the world whose leaders have enormous challenges and who have very few people investing in them, thinking about how to serve them. And that's the role that we get to play. It's a privilege. And for these guys to look us in the eye after only having experienced one day at the summit to say, we need the summit. There aren't other alternatives. Please bring the summit to our country. That I don't ever want to forget.